firings, hirings, tornadoes, and snow, and long-awaited justice. 2023 had it all. KCBD News Channel 11's Case Wilbanks takes a look back. 2023 begins with new leadership on the Lovett County Commissioner's Court. Jordan Rackler sworn in to serve the people of Precinct 4. And as sure as the page turns on the calendar, the tumbleweeds roll on the South Plains, but pile up a little more than usual in January. Meanwhile, down in Austin, allegations of violence by his fiance get former Red Raider basketball coach Chris Beard fired from Texas, a case that's eventually dropped. Multiple schools, including Lubbock Cooper and Slayton, end up in national headlines over accusations of racism in their districts, with all saying that they don't tolerate it. Lubbock's congressman is appointed chair of the House Budget Committee, and owners of Joyland announced the amusement park of 50 years will close for good. Its owner, David Dean, later passes away. And back in Austin, the 88th regular legislative session begins with a new representative for Lubbock, Carl Tepper, in the House. The lawmakers would eventually be called back for four special sessions well into the year. And how about some snow, or more than seven inches of it, in Lubbock? In February, inside the Lubbock County Courthouse, the trial of Hollis Daniels III, beginning with his plea of guilt for murdering Texas Tech police officer Floyd East Jr. The jury heard weeks of testimony and arguments about his punishment. Evidence not seen for years was revealed in court, including the video of the 2017 shooting itself revealing how he snuck a gun inside the Texas Tech Police Department. Ultimately, the jury decided he would spend life in prison. And in the city council chambers, a plan to build an apartment complex at the northern boundary of Tech Terrace is denied, ending a long fight by its residents against it. Grain silos go on the Lubbock Airbnb market, and the Big 12 says Oklahoma and Texas will leave sooner than thought at the end of the year. In March, a longtime Lubbock restaurant accidentally burns. After several months, Brian Stakes reopens in December. The Red Raider basketball coach is suspended amid allegations of inappropriate remarks to players. Mark Adams eventually steps down. And a man climbs up a phone tower in Lubbock's medical district, only to find law enforcement waiting below. While another is accused of kidnapping a woman in North Lubbock and trying to drag her into this backyard bunker, later tear gassed out by SWAT. As Lubbock County commissioners take up an ordinance restricting game rooms, a shooting at one leaves several injured and one dead. The accused shooter, Jamie Lee Pruitt, faces murder and aggravated assault charges. 26-year-old Tyler Blake Christie is killed in a fiery plane crash at Lubbock's Executive Air Park. The Lady Raiders make it to the Super 16 in the WNIT tournament. And Grant McCaslin wins the NIT in North Texas and then blows into Lubbock with the West Texas wind to take the head coaching position at Texas Tech. In April, 32-year-old Jordan Merchant is arrested and indicted for a 2022 crash that killed 9-year-old Conrad Tomlinson. Alexis Avila is found guilty and later sentenced to 16 years in prison for throwing her newborn baby in a Hobbs dumpster. The Lubbock County Expo Center announces its first founding sponsor, but still awaits enough private funds to break ground. Explosions and vehicles crashing off the Marsha Sharp Freeway when a crane catches fire. And in McAdoo, winds of up to 100 miles an hour cause destruction there. Then it's an invasion of migrating moths. While a Lamisa horse set to compete in the Kentucky Derby is injured and put down. After nearly three decades as CEO of the Lubbock Area United Way, Glenn Cochran retires. In May, KCBD celebrates 70 years on the air. Allegations of inappropriate sexual contact between elementary students and Plainview ISD, the district faces angry parents and eventually alters its code of conduct. A 60-year-old man is accused of trying to leave a Lubbock children's play business with a 13-year-old girl. A wrong-way crash on the Marshall Sharp Freeway takes the lives of five people, including two toddlers. We also unexpectedly lose beloved members of the education community. Dr. Stephen Burke, Dean of the School of Medicine at the Texas Tech Health Sciences Center, and Doyle Vogler, an administrator in Lubbock ISD. Local state representatives vote to impeach Attorney General Ken Paxton, but later in the Senate, Charles Perry joins many others to acquit him. In June, the South Plains Honor Flight loses its founder and a longtime local broadcaster, Dave King. With Wolfworth now purchasing water from Lubbock, its years-long drought restrictions are eased. The Lubbock Municipal Court is formally opened. And in Matador, a deadly tornado strikes the community. 
its recovery continues. While in Lubbock, large hail hammers the city. Sean Adkins walks out of jail, no longer charged in the murder of Colorado City's 13-year-old Haley Dunn. Prosecutors say they don't have enough evidence to go to trial. In July, record crowds turn out to see Lubbock's soccer team, the Matadors, in the playoffs. They're now set to play in the 109th Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup Tournament in 2024. Thousands of missed 911 calls go unanswered in Lubbock. Then police chief Floyd Mitchell said he reduced the number of dispatchers due to staffing and budget issues. And as Lubbock continues to deal with many juvenile involved shootings, 12-year-old Jordan Rosales is shot and killed by a 13-year-old with a stolen gun. And an outbreak of distemper at the Lubbock Animal Shelter temporarily shuts it down and leads to the death of nearly 50 dogs. In August, the new Lubbock Cooper Liberty High School opens and a tribute to the late councilman T.J. Patterson is dedicated at Citizens Tower. Dr. Brigitte Curtis, a beloved psychiatrist, is tragically killed by her son. The infestation of red flower beetles in Leveland at a grain company starts a continuing fight to rid them from nearby homes and prevent it from happening again. Texas Tech's second football season under Joey McGuire begins in September with excitement over sellout crowds in a south end zone under construction. After the city council discusses personnel and executive session, Lubbock Police Chief Lloyd Mitchell resigns. Brandon Cruz pleads guilty to the 2019 capital murder of Sandy Cervantes, kidnapped and found dead in an abandoned house in Hockley County. Red Raider alum C.Q. Brown is confirmed as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, nominated by President Biden. In October, many look safely at the sun for a rare solar eclipse. A petition is turned in with enough signatures to the Lubbock City Council to take up an ordinance, which they voted against, to decriminalize possessions of small amounts of marijuana. That proposal now goes to the people for a vote. Deputy Police Chief Leith McClure is arrested for assault and violence charges accused by a subordinate employee. He eventually resigns. Patrick Mahomes helps Texas Tech announce it's going with Adidas next year. Lubbock County commissioners pass an ordinance prohibiting abortion drugs, services, and even using county roads to get the procedure. In November, legendary Red Raider basketball coach Bob Knight dies. Voters cast their ballots in the state constitutional amendment election, passing measures like property tax cuts, funding for water infrastructure projects, and research funding for universities like Texas Tech. The long-awaited Woodrow Road expansion project begins, and the going band from Raiderland performs in the national spotlight, marching its way into the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. A Lubbock development legacy is left behind by Delbert McDougall. And we also say goodbye to firefighter Matt Dawson, nearly four years after the icy crash that left him critically injured. But he secured benefits for public servants like him in those years, now law, the Matt Dawson Act. In the final month of 2023, ground is broken on the West Texas Veterans Cemetery, a show stopping in to the Texas Tech Centennial at the 65th Carol of Lights. LPNL gets all of its customers on the ERCOT grid, setting up that long talked about power to choose in January. After one term, Trey Payne announces he won't run for mayor again, and the Red Raiders bring home another trophy with a victory in the Independence Bowl, giving hope to fans for the year to come. It's a year sure to bring more stories from across the South Plains, stories we hope are filled with triumph, heart, healing, and happiness. Whatever the story is to tell, we promise to bring it to you through coverage you can count on.